Hey guys, welcome to Peripheral Vision, and today we're taking a look at the Super Mario Bros. line of Amiibo. Now for those that are unfamiliar with Amiibo, Amiibo are these little toys that you can scan into your Wii U or new 3DS XL that will interact with your game in some way. Some of them provide downloadable content, some of them change the game in some particular fashion, but they're all cool little figures and I like them, as at least as a concept. Now, what's interesting about the Super Mario Bros. line, well, there's a couple things, but first off, it is the first new line of Amiibos since the Super Smash Bros. one, so I think that's cool because it signifies that Amiibos have been enough of a success that they can warrant expanding into other lines, and in fact, they've been a phenomenal, like, ridiculous success to the point of creating kind of an issue in the collector's markets. Now, I know some of you might be saying, Eric, why did you take these out of their packaging? Well, some of them I got outside packaging, but I decided that I just want, besides this guy, and I'll get into that in a minute, I really just wanted to have them to display and use them and actually play with them. So that's why they're out of packaging. The other interesting thing that the Super Mario Bros. line does is they introduce limited editions. Not just store exclusive limited editions, but we have a legitimate special edition. We have Gold Amiibo Edition, and this is the Mario, as you can see, it is, besides the coloring, identical to the actual, well, the, the regular Mario Amiibo from the set. And I, I do not think that this is going to be the only Gold Amiibo Edition. I think we're going to get other Gold Amiibos, probably, maybe even with that Smash Ballad, I think we're going to get a Gold version of whatever character people get in Amiibo form. But they do the same thing, exactly. What is interesting is that if you plug in the gold amiibo to the game, it will pop up as a gold Mario avatar instead. So you, it is a little, the chip in this is different than the chip in this, but only very, very slightly. Now, what do they do? Well, they were made in conjunction with Mario Party 10, and the role they serve in that game is to unlock a special mode called Amiibo Party, which is a more standard style of Mario Party game, where you control the little pieces and you go around the board just playing Mario Party. There is a secondary role where, in a bonus area, you can use them to unlock special stands. What's interesting about the Mario line, however, is the fact that you'll notice there are double-ups in characters. So, for example, we've got Princess Peach here, but we also have Princess Peach in Super Smash Brothers. Also, fun fact, this is way better of a model, but not going to criticize that. Not in this review, anyway. And they work, the sa well, more or less the same. Super Smash Brothers Peach will function, it'll work fine with Mario Party 10. You can plug her in, and it'll, it'll unlock the Amiibo Party and do all that stuff. However, the specific line does have certain things about it. Like that bonus thing I was telling you about with the custom sands, only the Mario line can do that. However, the basic Amiibo Party mode will work with the Smash ones. For example, Rosalina is a Smash-specific Amiibo that will have a special board for Amiibo Party, but she is not one of the Mario sets, so you have to use her Smash version. Now, how about the sculpts? Kinda boring. Honestly, they're kinda... Gold Mario is cool, it's a nice little thing. Uh, I have a little bit of an issue with how scalpers have treated... Well, scalpers have treated all the Amiibos in this way, but I have an issue specifically with how much of a pain in the butt Gold Mario was to get, but it's not really any different than any of the other amiibo shortages, so I'm not going to get into that. But in general, I'd say these are generic sculpts. They're very much, they're like New Super Mario Bros. kind of sculpts, and while they're detailed and they're nice, they're not nearly as cool as their Smash Brothers counterparts. You can see that it's almost like there's a shading to the Smash Brothers, and this one has a cooler pose and stuff. Obviously, he's in an action pose for Smash, and this is more of a, hey, let's go kind of a pose. But I still think that the Mario line in general is kind of boring. Toad, ugh, probably being the worst defender. But then again, Toad has a very generic design anyway, so I can't really fault him just by his design. This is just the way he looks. I'm 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 actually kind of toadist. I'm I'm racist against toads. So, sorry guy, sorry little guy. But also fun fact, Toad seems to be the quote unquote rare one. I, I've seen him around. He's not like he's not uh, Captain Falcon or Little Mac rare, but he's the most uncommon. And I think that's because Toad is the only character that is exclusive to the Mario line. There's no Smash equivalent to Toad, and there's no other equivalent to Toad. Also, the Toad Amiibo has some interesting functionality with Captain Toad, but I won't get into every single one of these specific roles and all that stuff, but that is the Mario line for Mario Party 10. 
How do you like them? I'm glad that I've recently collected all of them, and let me know what you think of this set and how they work with different games. And as always, later days.